Hi, this is Manos Burlakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 87 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a retrograde CTO PCI case that was complicated by microcatheter fracture and entrapment. The patient presented with a posterior myocardial infarction that was due to failure of a vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch. He had undergone multiple interventions in that vein graft, the last intervention being five days prior to the current presentation. He had multiple comorbidities, including cardiomyopathy, pacemaker, and chronic kidney disease. He did have a CTO of the right coronary artery. He did have an acutely thrombosed vein graft that he had recently been stented five days prior. He did have a patent Lima to LAD graft with good flows. And the question here was whether we should try to recanalize the vein graft to the obtuse marginal, which was the culprit, or recanalize the native coronary artery instead. And there are several reports, including this one from 2010, in which patients who come with acute vein graft failure and occlusion can be treated by recanalizing the native coronary instead using CTO techniques. And that was the plan in this particular case, given the multiple episodes of vein graft to OM3 failure, the plan was to attempt to recanalize the native circumflex CTO. Looking at the baseline characteristics, this was a proximal circumflex CTO with an ambiguous proximal cap. We have those two little marginal branches coming off at the proximal cap, making it very hard to determine where the occlusion is starting. We could not really visualize very well the distal vessel given the vein graft occlusion, but appeared to be diffusely diseased. The length was hard to estimate, but appeared to be about 50 millimeters. And there was the recently occluded vein graft to OM3 that could be used as a retrograde conduit. And that is why the plan was to start with retrograde crossing through the occluded vein graft. And then if that failed, change to undergrade wire escalation or undergrade dissection or re-entry. As we had hoped for, we were able to fairly quickly advance a retrograde pilot 200 guide wire over a 150-centimeter cable microcatheter all the way through the vein graft into the distal vessel and start retrograde wiring. We used an Amplatz AL18 French guide for the retrograde attempt, in addition to a 3758 French EBU for undergrade. We then changed it to a knuckle wire given the ambiguity uh, distally as well, and we're able to advance the knuckle wire retrograde going into the mid circumflex. And then finally, we were able to advance a retrograde knuckle wire all the way to the ostium of the circumflex and the native left main. The left main did have some significant disease, and that is why a safety wire had been advanced through the left main into the LAD. We did multiple undergrade wiring attempts, trying to advance a guide wire to the mid-circumflex and then potentially perform reverse card there. However, we were unable to advance an undergrade guide wire into the circumflex. In the meantime, the patient did have some disease in the circumflex that appeared to be getting slightly worse during this undergrade wiring attempts. And that is why we decided to stand the left main to make sure we did not have any flow compromise, and that was achieved using a 3 by 24 millimeter stand. We then tried to perform essentially stent reverse card by advancing a retrograde guide wire into the LAD and the left main, and we used intravascular ultrasound guidance to ensure that the wire was in the true lumen. And indeed, the wire did cross into the true lumen, but unfortunately, instead of going towards the left main and the aorta, the wire was going towards the mid and distal LAD. And that is why we used a 4 millimeter gooseneck snare to snare the guide wire. However, although we were able to get the guide wire in the undergrade guide catheter, despite using a trapping balloon to trap the retrograde guide wire, 
we were unable to advance the retrograde Keravel microcatheter into the undergrade guide catheter. In the process, we lost the guide wire, and that is why we used an end snare to re-snare the wire. But despite multiple attempts, we were unable to advance the Corsair through the recently placed left main stand. We eventually tried to remove the Caravel so that to replace it with another microcatheter, and in the process, the, Corsair, the Caravel microcatheter tip broke and remained entangled into the left main stand where the back end of the Caravel came out, and that's how it looked like. We tried multiple undergrade attempts to advance a guide wire, and then uh, we tried several retrograde microcatheters, including a Corsair, a Turnpike, but we were unable to advance anything, anything by the retrograde or in the undergrade direction. That process took several hours, and we were getting fairly frustrated because we were unable to remove the retrograde guide wire, we could not pull it up, it was frozen, and we could not advance anything either in the undergrade or retrograde direction. So eventually what we did is we did the so-called mother, daughter, and granddaughter technique. This is for two guideliners. So we have an eight friends guideline that would advance to the proximal vein graft. And then through this, we adv advanced a six friends guideliner that went all the way through the vein graft, down the anastomosis, and up the native circumflex. And then through this, we were able to advance a micro 14 microcatheter all the way to the fragment of the careful microcatheter. And then after doing that, we were able to retrieve the entrapped guide wire that was a Pilot 200, as well as the Keravel microcatheter tip. We performed additional standing of the left main because uh, there was um, a dissection at the area of the entrapment of the Keravel microcatheter. But then eventually we uh, had TM3 flow, continued TM3 flow into the left main and the LAD. This was a very complex procedure. The procedure time was eight hours. A total of 405 ml of contrast were used. 151 minutes of fluoroscopy time and 4.7 gray radiation dose with a DAP of 27,645. We had contemplated during the case we were unable to remove the equipment to send the patient for coronary bypass craft surgery, but of course that would have carried significant risk given the patient's previous coronary bypass, kidney failure, and heart failure. The patient did have a complicated post-operative course, probably a combination of the presentation of non-STEMI and uh, the complicated procedure. It did have um, uh, pulmonary edema requiring uh, uh, dialysis because of acute, acute kidney injury as well, but he finally recovered and he was dismissed home 20 days um, um, after presentation. So this case has several lessons. The first is that although Recanalizing the native occlusions instead of a repeated failing vein graft is one appealing treatment option. It can also be very challenging in these patients with calcif calcified vessels and multiple other comorbidities such as heart failure and CKD. The second is that performing stent reverse card should be avoided because of issues like the ones we encountered in this case. It may be very hard to cross through the stand. The wire may cross through the sides of the stand, and we may have um, the equipment uh, entrapped uh, and fractured, as we saw in this case. The third lesson is that in case of microcatheter tip fracture and entrapment, retrieval can be very challenging. Essentially, in this case, the Pilot 200 and the microcatheter tip were entangled into the uh, left main stand and could neither be advanced nor be removed until we were finally able to use the mother, daughter, and granddaughter technique that provided very strong support for a retrograde microcatheter, a micro 14, to be advanced all the way to the left main and allow retrieval of both the microcatheter tip fragment as well as the guide wire. Thank you.